Hi, I'm Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com, and today's flute tip is on how to create a vibrato. All right, vibrato is a little bit of a tricky thing. Uh, I can't see inside a student's throat. I can't say, push here, pull there, do this, move that string over there, and now voila, you have vibrato. It's something that you have to feel. You have to understand where it comes from and what it feels like. And once you know what it should feel like, then you can start using it. And then we can use it faster, slower, no vibrato, whatever, so that we can create it with color in our solos. So there's a couple ways I've used to help my students create vibrato, and I'm going to try to explain them to you. But again, it's tricky. I like to just say, okay, I want you to go home and do this on your flute. And uh, that's really, literally the first thing when I have a student and I want them to, to learn vibrato, I say, okay, go home and practice doing that on the flute. Sometimes they come back and they can do it. It's just natural to them. They understand, they hear it, they can do it. Other times they come back and say, I've been trying and I can't get that to happen. And that's when I start using the other tools in my tool basket. But truly, when I start working with vibrato and getting a student to do it, less is more. I want to only give them what they absolutely need in order to learn vibrato because I feel like it can get complicated and you can overthink it and then it never happens because they are just getting too much in their head and not in their throat about it and it doesn't happen. So uh, the first thing I'm going to tell you is go turn this off and go try vibrato. Just try to do it. It happens in your throat. Just try to do it. Okay, now it doesn't work, it didn't work, or you wanna know more, let's talk about it. There's two different methods I use to see if a student can start getting vibrato, and they have all been successful. I haven't had anybody that didn't learn how to use vibrato. Uh, so you can always learn it. It's there, it might take you longer than somebody else, um, somebody else might get it really fast and someone else might take, you know, a month to get it or two months to get it. It can always be learned. And I have great faith that you can learn this too at whatever age. Okay. I think the key to vibrato is knowing where it sits in your throat. If, uh, if you talk to a vocal teacher, they often know the anatomy of the throat and the voice box really well. They can give you a rundown as to exactly what's happening in your throat to create vibrato. And if that is something that appeals to you, find a video from a voice teacher talking about how you get vibrato because um, they get this anatomy lesson in school and they get it down. But you know what? For me, I don't care all that stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to me. All I care about is where do I feel it? Where I feel it, for me, is where it comes from. Because feeling it is going to be doing it. And I, for my students, I've uh, used this method of feeling it, and it's worked. So let me tell you, I feel it in the back of my throat. When I use vibrato, I feel it back there. I feel it coming from the back of my throat. Something back here is doing it. It's not coming from the front of my mouth, which usually sounds like this. It's the machine gun vibrato. Okay. If that's what you're using, you have to play what I would say is stop using vibrato altogether. Give yourself a week of absolutely zero vibrato because you've learned it wrong. So now we need to sort of create a new pattern of no vibrato and then start learning how to do it properly. So when I have a student come to me who's doing it improperly, I, I have them just, first thing we do, no vibrato, learn how to play with absolutely no vibrato because the throat has to learn to relax. Okay. Now on the foundation for vibrato is support. I have videos where I talk about support. Support is huge. I talk about it all the time. 
Uh, main reason is because I went for a long time without having any. So once I learned how, I realized what I'd been missing all those years. And I want to make sure that you have support while you're playing. Vibrato is a whole lot easier if you have support. You breathe from your stomach and ribs, you tighten them up, and you use that. That aside, let's just give you an exercise. It's often easier to learn how to do it in your voice just without your flute, okay? In your voice. So I have students do this. Just modulate a pitch. When you modulate the pitch, the part that's moving, that's exactly where you feel vibrato. You feel vibrato coming from that same spot. So as we go along here, I'm going to say every time, go try it. Try that right now. Turn this off. Go try it. See if you can get vibrato with your voice and then put it on your flute. See if that works because less is more. So if that's the piece that you're missing, go, go for it. See if that works. Now, when we do that on the flute, uh, I can't go, ah, ah, um, because, you know, in order to go up and down a pitch, and that's not going to give me vibrato. But I'm going to say, if I went, ah, 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 I'm, I want to do that on the flute. It's just going to be a pulse. So pulse your tone. And you can do that by, I think the, the better way is do it from your throat because that's how I did it when I sang it. Ah, that was from here. But you can do it from your support system too, your, your breathing. Ah, the only thing is eventually your stomach has to not move in and out when you play and it has to be come from here. But it's okay to do it from your stomach. Okay, now from there, pulse it a little bit faster. Now, if you get some books on vibrato and they'll give you some exercise, generally they ha start with your quarter note pulse and then they get you going into eighth note pulses to the beat. So you have a metronome on and then you get into 16th notes and then you get it or you do triplets and they, they have you pulse it. Okay. I know that's worked for a lot of people, but one time I had a student come to me, a college student. Uh, and she did vibrato and it was from the right place. It was real vibrato, but she never, ever got away from the fact that each, no matter what, if it was an eighth note, it had two pulses. If it was a quarter note, it had to have four pulses or, or something like that. She couldn't get away from the, being measured. So I've tried to stay away from talking about measuring it in the beat. Uh, because of that girl's problem. Now, of all the myriad students that probably have been taught that method and do it fine, there's this one outlier that had a problem and could never get away from the, uh, the measured vibrato. You don't want your vibrato to be measured, but if you think that will work for you, uh, try pulsing quarter note pulses and then eighth note pulses and then try to get it faster. I like to do it unmeasured uh, just to keep away from, from you know, falling into that trap. If one person can fall into it, oh, there might be someone else out there that can never get away from the measured vibrato. Okay, now once you start getting faster, you eventually have to tighten the stomach muscles and it just has to start flowing from your throat. Okay? but I guarantee you it's still from that same spot that I pulse from. If you feel it there, you can work at getting it faster. Now, if you've been doing it from your stomach, eventually 
ha, 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 ha. It comes in and in and in. Eventually, tighten it up and just let it go into your throat. Let it go there and keep it open. Okay. If you play with a tight throat, so if you breathe like this, that's a tight jaw and a tight throat. Vibrato is very difficult to get. You want to take that yawning breath. It's much easier to do if it's tight down here and as open as a hollow tube up here. That is a problem. So if you if you think you're tight, you've got to get it to loosen up. Okay. Now work at just your long tones. Start slow. And see if you can pulse it fast enough, tighten, and just let the throat take over. Let that air pulse come from behind your tongue back in there. Okay? If it's from here, if you go faster, then you moved it into the mouth. That's not where you want your vibrato to be. So I like to think of vibrato, your, your tone wave is a hollow tube. Okay, your tone is a hollow tube flowing along, right? It's a wave. And I like to think that the um, vibrato is inside that wave, going along with it. The one that's in the mouth is on, sits on top of it and hits it hits the wave as it goes, like a motorboat when it's bouncing along the ocean. That's what I think of with that mouth vibrato. Uh, the vibrato should come back here and it should be organic to the tone. Every time you put your flute up, vibrato is there. It's not like those old Wurlitzer organs where they turn the organ on, you hear the fan start and you push the button and it, you hear the, the, even without putting a note down, the air is now wobbling because it has vibrato and then you can play it. Sometimes you can still hear it at hockey stadiums, but that's what you want. You want your vibrato to happen. As soon as I put my flute up, vibrato is on. don't want to say, oh wait, let me put it on on that note, and now it's off, and let me put it on because there's a half note coming up. I want it to be on so that any time there's a note of any length, there's vibrato. Okay, practice that. Work on it. Leave me some comments about how it's going for you. I'm happy to help and give you advice as you go along your vibrato journey. You can get it. Anyone can get it. And it makes your tone uh, just so much more lively. It's alive. It's real. It's resonant when you use vibrato and not just so uh, a, a dead tone that just sticks out there. It warms it up and makes it beautiful. Work on your vibrato. That's today's flute tip. If you like today's flute tip, press the like button, comment below, subscribe, and share it with your friends.